let's get going. So I can't do this in one minute. I will do this in 10. The slide says it's a demo. I couldn't bring all the hardware. I will show you the software. My name is Dennis, and I'm an FAE for Lauterbach. I'm going to give you a demo of Lauterbach's RISC-V Trace. I'm getting a lot of questions about debug as well and trace. So I'm going to show you the infrastructure, sort of the state of the world as far as debug and trace for RISC-V at the moment. Then we'll get into our product and we'll look at our, our software here. So Lauterbach is a proud sponsor of the RISC-V Summit. We've actually been members of the RISC-V Foundation since its inception. Our first RISC-V debugger was introduced that same year in 2017. We are active members in the work groups, especially debug and Marcus, the, the developer, would say trace especially. We're trying to get trace done. We need to get it finalized before we can say that we fully support it. So let's talk about debug for a minute. So we have a couple of different products that range from our, our lower end micro trace, which is for 32-bit architectures. Uh, this will give you access to the registers like any other debugger. The nice thing about this is when we finally get uh, trace uh, finalized and the committees are happy with it, the hardware is there that we can start doing 4-bit trace. So it's a nice low-end product um, that will give you the ability to work with a microcontroller type of, of products. Next to it, we have the uh, X50, our modular debugger. The cool thing about this is it will work across multiple architectures. So you can debug your RISC-V, both 32 and 64-bit, but if you have ARM on your SOC, you can use the same debugger, same cable. You'll need to talk to the sales guy about licensing. So what does debug mean and what does it look like? So if you're implementing just RISC-V, you probably have a system that looks like this, where you have a JTAG port, you have designed your DTM, that goes to the debug module, and then you have the DM, and you have hearts behind it. So this is a pure RISC-V system, hooks up very easy, very easy to work with. But what if you have a mixed environment? If you have an environment with Corsite, we can uh, work with that as well. So you will end up with a DAP that you'll talk to, that DAP will create you know, the AXI bus or AHB bus or, or whatever that will go down and eventually you'll get to that uh, debug module, that DM, and the hearts are behind that. You will describe the system to Trace32 and you can start debugging it. We also work with Tessent. So the guys right behind us have uh, solutions that work really well. The interesting thing here is they have some USB-based solutions so that we can start uh, getting those closed chassis debug environments. OK, so that's our debug. Next, I'm going to talk about trace. Uh, I mentioned the X50. If you have on-chip trace, we can that's all the hardware you need. And you can go and fetch the information that's in those trace buffers and, and use our software with that. Over here, we have the Power Trace 3. If you have Parallel Trace, that's most of what I see the implementations of people doing. Um, kind of a mid to high performance interface. And then between the two, we have the Power Trace Serial. So if you have some very high performance systems, you have a lot of data that you want to collect, um, you'll be looking at the Power Trace Serial. So what does that debug environment look like? Very similar, we work with mixed environments. So this is showing a mixed Sci-5 and Core Site environment, where at the top you have a Sci-5 core, you have that trace encoder. It will then feed into that Core Site funnel, where eventually it will come, come out uh, either on an on-chip trace or externally that you can collect with a TPIU uh, this slide is just showing the TPIU, but basically any interface that we support with ARM uh, will be able to collect that information and pull out the RISC-V information. So you can debug both. And I get this question as people are coming at the show. You can debug and trace both simultaneously. If you have the Tessent solution, we can do the same. Uh, where if you have it mixed, uh, you can have the Tessent 
eventually you'll feed into that core site funnel, again, bringing it out onto the system. And this slide shows either on chip or serial, but again, if you have a TPIU, you can come out that TPIU as well. Now, what if you decided you were just going to do a pure Tessent solution? And at this point, I'll, I'll say that the Tessent solution will lead into the E-Trace. So very similar specs. I'm not on the work group, so I don't know the fine nuances of it. But the fact that we're supporting Tessent will tell you as soon as we can finalize that E-Trace, we'll be supporting uh, E-Trace with our tools. Uh, there you have their IP blocks, and it comes out. Uh, this slide actually shows that we'll be able to trace across the USB port. And similarly, if you have a Sci-5 trace uh, environment, we support that today. In fact, we have the demo, which is what the data I'll be showing you. Um, and if you're following along, that Sci-5 interface will go to the end trace. And so we'll support that when that's finalized. Okay, at this point, I want to switch over and actually start showing you our software. Um, this is data that's collected off the system. I collected that this morning, uh, basically showing the trace list window. Trace list is great if you're debugging an, a problem and you've got it narrowed down and you want to see exactly what that core has been doing. You can see in very fine detail, this is showing the call it the high-level language, basically your C source. If you want to see more information, you just zoom in and you can get down to seeing the object code, timestamps, um, everything that's happening in the system. But when you're first starting out, it's, this is like looking for a needle in a haystack. And I've had people ask me about that. That's actually kind of hard tracing. So we have this feature. Uh, you can get there directly by clicking the chart button. Um, the chart is in essence a sequence diagram on its side. You are going to see the different functions. You will see lines that show this function calls that function. And I'm going to bring this up because one of the things you can do, you'll notice the little red bars. You can put things in groups to help you see the big picture. So in this case, I have a free RTOS system. Uh, you're seeing the other. This is the application that we're working with and the group RTOS, which was highlighted in red. That's when we're down in the kernel. And you can see that for this period of time, we were bouncing between the two. Eventually, we got here where we were running the application itself in this section here. Um, and I actually clicked on this, and you saw the list window pop up. When you click on anything, I have it set up so that it will bounce around. So if you click on one thing, you'll see all the other windows update. So, in this case, it's like, okay, I'm kind of curious what's going on over here. And so we can bring up this chart window, and we can see that they're time correlated. And I'm going to zoom in on this section. And I zoomed in a little bit too much. Okay. So the nice thing about that chart is that when you um, look at something, you can very easily start to see things that you might not be able to see in the trace list. In this case, I'm going to click here. I'm going to drop a reference point, And I will click over here, because there's something happening. I'm not sure what's happening. And I look at that, and it says the time between the two was exactly one millisecond. And if I look down and zoom in on this piece, I can see eventually we get down here to this section where I see the task increment tick. So every millisecond, you're getting called. And you can find that very easily by looking at the GUI. Now, if there's something that you're suspect of this, um, we have other tools that we have enabled as well, where we have that whole trace buffer. And we can go through and analyze it and start to collect data. So this little piece is an artifact of the fact that our trace isn't completely done. But I want you to look down here where we have the one millisecond. Um, what this is showing you is that some of the times it's exactly one millisecond. Some of the times it's between one millisecond and 1.1 millisecond. So there's a little bit of jitter. And I have had customers that will collect a lot of trace for maybe a minute, look at it, and realize 
you know, my periodic interrupt was occurring at, a, at the appropriate cadence, but every once in a while, it misses it. And with this tool, she was able to determine how many times it missed and where it was happening. Then she could go back and forth between this view, this statistical view, the chart, and the list windows, and eventually found that, yes, there was a bug in her code, and that every once in a while, she would miss one of those timer ticks. OK, my time's up. They're going to be setting up the, the food and the drinks. And you have the keynotes. So I could continue on. But I'll ask, do you guys have any questions? Um, yeah, sure. Great. OK, so the question was about multi-core debug. And if you have multiple cores and you can get them in the same window, they'll show up on that same trace list window and the chart window. And you can very easily tell what cores are there. The demo that I have in the back is of a heterogeneous system where I have ARM and, and RISC-V. Unfortunately, once you split those up, you can't necessarily time see them in the same window. But if you have a common timestamp generator, you can correlate them in time. And we have had customers, and I suspect there are, we have partners that will be able to line those up so you can see them uh, side by side or top and bottom. Good question. OK, that's all the time. I'm going to run long. So thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the show.